So anyway, right. let's uh, let's not beat around the bush. The obvious elephant in the room is Semler's in the other box, not Richard Lewis. And this isn't a special guest episode with Semler. So first things first, Semler is now the new co-host of By the Numbers. But I've got to explain this. There's so much to unpack here. And by yeah. the way, I can't tell you everything about Richard's situation. That's Richard's situation. I only know what I know. So the first things first, the most important question is, why is Richard here, obviously? Because By the Numbers is Richard Lewis with Thorin. Right? First of all, this might actually sound a bit weird because, again, I'm not Richard Lewis, so I can't speak for him. But based on what he has said publicly, he did a stream. He basically says he is going to gradually remove esports from his life and his career as a result. And so he's going to finish up all his big stories. Like you see, he's finished up that esports Iron Curtain series. He's got obviously loads of match fixing type stuff still in the queue, things about people in the industry. He's going to finish those stories up, but he's not going to, in theory, I think, start up like new things for future years. And if you want another reason, this is why it'll be a bit confusing. Like, well, if he's not quit, because he, he hasn't just left immediately. That's the part that's been misunderstood. I know people heard the stream via quotes and they've just heard like, I'm quitting esports or I'm retiring. They think that means he's gone today. And like, why is he still here? Because of course, that's what a great industry it is that your answer to why like one of the most legendary people ever stayed for one extra day was like, hey, if you say you're leaving, just get out already. Like, I wonder why he's leaving, guys. <laughs> Fuck, you know, I wonder what it could be. So anyway, basically, he's just not going to be doing as much stuff anymore. And the reason, as a result, he's not doing by the numbers, though, because you might think, well, why not wrap up this show? Is because, first of all, you might know by the rebrand, we only did three episodes of Revenge of By the Numbers. Before that, the original show was By the Numbers. Then we had Return of By the Numbers when we had the Patreon. Now we have Revenge of By the Numbers. Now, first things first understand this Patreon was closed down now. We are not anymore supported by a Patreon. We're now supported through the company that me, Monty, and you ready? Richard Lewis were forming. So the problem is basically this. To do the honourable thing, because Richard now knows he doesn't want long-term to be involved in esports, well, he was unsurprisingly, because he was an owner of that company, he had equity in it, he was going to be paid per episode, etc. And we already had because this is the way the real world of media works, I'm afraid, guys. We don't just get these sponsors five minutes before we get them. We had to pitch to these guys last year, and we had a whole slate of shows that we pitched them. And, that, and guess what? One of them, the flagship, one of them was, of course, this show. Of course, by the numbers, one that, along with so many insights, like guaranteed hits, isn't it? Super long running, the host, etc. So Richard didn't want to screw over me and Monty by coming in, starting out with his company, taking equity, doing a couple of shows, and then realizing he has to leave anyway. So he's done the honorable thing, and he's basically just told me, and this is the other key detail, because another question, which is a totally legit question, by the way, would be this. Why not just make a new show with you and Samuel then? Why call it by the numbers? That's a very good question. And I agree fair. with the sentiment. Because if you notice in my career, typically that is what I do. I make shows with a specific co-host. I make the name of the branding. And if I ever have to like say I don't get on with that whole host or they leave the game, whatever, I make a new show and I make a new show with that person, that brand. So there's two reasons, though, why it makes sense that we're going to keep revenge of by the numbers going on. One is, as I alluded to before, we've already sold this to the sponsors. We actually have a certain number of episodes we must deliver as part of what we've agreed on our side for all the fucking Skriller. So already he knows we'd, it'd be a bit awkward to have to go back to them and go, oh, yeah, by the way, that show, one of those best shows we sold you. Yeah, that doesn't exist anymore. But we're making a brand new show called Darren Semler Pull It Out of Their Ass. Can we have the money, play Like... It's, that doesn't look great. And then secondly, another detail, and this is a piece of trivia. This is just where being the esports of story, you can always get out of jail. Here's what you guys don't know, because you're not super old school fans, probably. If you actually go back to the original By The Numbers show, by the way, the early episodes are terrible, because it actually was a show made by the sponsor. It was actually Alpha Draft at the time, a fancy company. And the original That's show wasn't even a show like this, because it was called By The Numbers. It really was a show where what we did each week is tell you, like, right, and if, if you're here's the fantasy team I'd take like this guy's sort of got to get a prank. and by the way it was terrible that's why Richard holy actually holy man I totally yeah forgot. yeah no no one remembers this deep plot Richard <laughs> was the one by the way who was smart enough to realize like this isn't fun to do and nobody's going to watch this week after week so what he realized was just have the sponsorship be the branding like your name's attached but it be the coolest podcast in esports and so what Richard figured out was this whatever by the numbers ended up being this weird thing where me and him I, this is why, by the way, it's tricky to bring a course because I always say the reason that show worked is it's like me and him are just like tapped into the main line of esports itself because we've got all these contacts and then we know all the esports news that's going on. And we've told, I've so many takes over the years. We always have an angle on something and we always have like stories that connect to it. So it's tough. Put it this way, if people don't know there's a reason this show didn't have guests. It's fucking tough, you know. It's not, it's not as easy as you think. Like even people in the industry who are knowledgeable, maybe they only know their tiny part of the industry or maybe they only know the game or they only, they only know players. They maybe 
don't know the industry or behind the scenes business stuff, etc. So it's a really complicated. The only other people who could do it would be journalists who actually yeah, there's not many coming to them as well. Yes, that's the thing. You get to a certain level of notoriety as a journalist, and then the people are coming to you with the story. You're not having to go to yes. them. All of a sudden, you wake up and you've got yes. your DMs filled with, "Oh, this is happening. This is happening. This is happening." That's this actually a, a very story. misunderstood yeah. detail in the industry. You know, it's where all the people who are like the Twitter egg, like anonymous leakers, it's where fans don't get it because they think mm-hmm. like, "But if that ends up being real, isn't his info legit as yours?" No, because that guy is like a guy on the beat hustling. <laughs> Siphoning out messaging everyone, oh, what's going on? What's going on? As Re- as Semler says, when you actually get to the level of me and Richard, here's how you find out something's happening. People just DM you directly. Sometimes, like the player involved, like their team, because again, they also know. By the way, you're going to get the info anyway. So somehow, sometimes they want to adjust how you get it and what you think of it, and add in their own little fucking two cents. So anyway, sure. to rewind it, there is actually a piece of deep law, which is when the original by the numbers was ending in 2016, because Richard also chose to leave that was actually when he was going to do e-league if you remember and if you remember mm-hmm. when he went to e-league he sort of shut down a lot of stuff he didn't take sponsors because he had that whole yeah. vision if people don't know where that was like i don't know i was just talking about this that was his sort of off ramp if you don't that was, get yeah, no, guys, what he, that, thought. He, he was going to gradually transition fully enough out of esports then but to like real tv by the way he would have been brilliant i think it would have been a great lineup for him it just yeah. turns out fighting games ruined that for him so i was over the fuck rolls but anyway the point is if we roll it back when he was going to leave at the time the sponsor originally told us they would re-up right so i had the same problem it was like i'm here the sponsor wants a show but richard's left so if people don't know the actual cost at the time we'd agreed was going to take over was moses if people don't know that's mm-hmm. back obviously when me and moses were doing e-league it's just what happened was the sponsor actually decided in the coming months not to re-up and so instead me and moses just as i said when i didn't have a sponsor i did make a show i just took my original counterpoints brand if you remember which was basically at the time like i just put together a panel of people to talk about whatever i want whenever there was no schedule to it no like set theme or whatever i just took that and made that the me and moses podcast instead of by the numbers so anyway that's a long round way about way of talking about why this is still called revenge by the numbers but here's the angle though so we'll talk in a second about richard because that should by the way obviously be the first topic of revenge by the numbers without richard lewis is where the fuck's richard lewis and isn't it a big deal he's leaving but before we do the one thing i would say we should we'll address a little bit now is what is this show going to be now because here's the other mm. thing i am utterly cognizant of Obviously, Semler is not Richard Lewis for good or for ill. So as a result, this shouldn't be the same type of show, in my opinion. It would be a mistake to try and make the same type of show because as we just sort of talked about, Richard is a very unique character. If people don't know, by the way, I'll even fully say this. There would be times, by the way, where like, because another thing people never understood about me and Richard Semler is they always thought that we are like literally best friends and we like, you know, like we're like the fucking odd couple and we just like message each other all the time. And then they realize that me and Richard are the sort of people who are just like hermits who just live absorbing the internet. But we actually almost never message another bit. In fact, you're one of the few people I ever even fucking call it. So <laughs> yeah. as a result, they don't know this. But so I would even myself look forward to buy the numbers for that reason. Because I would always think like, I can't wait to see what Richard's take on this like nigh home info I've got for him or something. Like that would be the shit. So here's the thing though. What I thought was this, when I was thinking of other hosts obviously as i alluded to you're gonna have to take it in a different direction so the angle we're gonna go with on semla here is this obviously semla can do the in-game stuff he has followed the game for very many years but this is the key part there's actually one of the best reasons i think to do it one we just recently had that whole like i think people enjoyed the camaraderie and the sort of rapport on pop flash we sort of test run the premise there but the bigger issue for me is this and this might sound like a wild way to say it but because you essentially yourself have extricated yourself from the esports <laughs> landscape Bit, you know, there was you were pushed a little bit as well as you jumped. You know, there's a bit of both. It, it was definitely. A bit I, of both, I, I, I often wonder waking up in the morning, <laughs> exactly. which was it? Yes. Did, exactly. I, did I feel the nudge or did I leave? I, I, I could be a bit of both. A slight push. Yes. Uh, so since that's happening to you, I also thought to myself, well, remember the other side of by the numbers, while from Richard, it's purely a journalistic perspective. It's also the idea that you talk about the big topics in the space that sometimes go beyond the game. Things like ESL, the Saudi Arabian connection, companies getting bought by China, like putting in place all restrictions and stuff. These are some of the bigger topics that, in my opinion, actually were sometimes the most important things by the numbers talked about. So while I can't give you the Richard Lewis journalistic perspective, I can only give you mine. Similar himself is an industry veteran. He's been behind the scenes for all these years. And crucially, because he's actually extricated himself, he can also just, he can basically sort of go off a little bit more than he might have done in the well, past. I can just like, say what I want. You can be pretty free with what you think about these topics, right? Oh, yeah, no, like that's the thing. And uh, I mean, for those of you who don't know, like I'm doing this in the mornings on my stream as well, where I just kind of like give my thoughts on everything. And that's pretty much exactly what it is now is just uh, because I've kind of taken that step back. I don't have any current contracts with any of the TOs right now because they're doing long-term contracts now all of a sudden when 
uh, apparently, you know, that that wasn't a thing. Now Interesting how that works in it. Into, all. <laughs> now they're trying to go back into multi-year deals. So, okay. So now, now it's like, if you don't get that signing block, it's not, oh, come back in a month. It's come back in six months to a year and uh, maybe, you know, something will be there. So even if I wanted to work with the TOs, I can't work with the TOs right now, unless they were to come to me for like some random thing. Right. So yes. At the, at, the, at the point it is right now, I just kind of get to sit back and enjoy the show with everybody else and really, you know, speak my mind. I never really held back too much in the past. Yeah, I wasn't true. really playing the political game. When I, when, I took, when I took interviews, I always spoke my mind pretty much. Like, it's not really changing. It's just that now I re- even, if I, even if I cared about ESL, I don't have to care about ESL in that sense or blast, yes. you know, uh, carried blast water in the past, of course, as a professional. Um, oh, that's, that's another sick. thing I hadn't even thought about as well. The other thing that obviously restricts other people in the industry is like we essentially partly through doing this show, Samuel, me and Richard did have this very bizarre relationship with like tournament organizers that we would yeah. simultaneously work with while incredibly criticizing and sometimes even saying like they're pieces of shit, like they're fucking like that. If people don't know, this is also where I, I'll never ever get the credit of my career. Mate. People think I'm just a moron bull in a china shop just flailing out. Like there's an, an art to that, guys. How do you think I keep getting hired by the same fuckers like this, you have to walk a really fine line when you do that so as you say though like most of the people won't even talk about some of those topics because they just know like you're just gambling not getting hired yeah i think i've kind of crossed that line now i think i've now p- managed to piss off enough people because when i okay. criticize the because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> towards the end of last year when i started actually you know speaking out a bit about the any key bullshit that was moving yes, in with dsl and all that you know and i was i was really tired because the whole the, what's sad is that i think i screwed up how i i, I put forth my my message on that because i was what i was what i was annoyed about was the hypocrisy of esl you know they're they're framing it as this message this yeah, is what exactly. we think you know men are toxic whatever and they're holding women back and and be, that's what i had beef with but then everybody's takeaway from that was oh Semler hates women and he doesn't want there to be women esports and i was like how did that even happen like here's how the thing did I screw man. things up so bad that that's the takeaway that everybody has is that you know, because I've never said anything against a female. That's the problem, mate. I, I think tournament. that's why I don't buy it. Here's the problem. I've seen this happen too many times. It's happened to me too many times. In my opinion, that's just pure gaslighting. Those and people, be, know, yeah. those people know you are not someone who hates women, by the way. They just know that's the best way to dismiss everything you said. And so what exactly. they did was just, essentially, you... same thing happened to me, was they themselves just ran out ahead like some sort of fucked up SJW Paul Revere going like, the women haters, the misogynists are coming. And then what happened was, if people don't know, thousands of women and bizarrely gay people for some reason had to include themselves in this. I don't know why. Like, this isn't really like do. a fucking tag team fat battle here, boys. But anyway, this these these certain groups online that all collate together with the flags and the fucking the acronyms, they all rushed to, to all say... What the hell? This guy hates women and or gays and or and, and basically they weren't even reacting to me and Semler. They were reacting to what they'd heard in their show. <laughs> yeah. So as a result, at that point, Semler, I don't think you can really be held responsible. Like I agree. No. Look, the one area I would say is this, because this is where I sometimes know I have fucked up. Okay, myself. go ahead. I would say Twitter's not the medium for it. That's the only thing I would say. Because like here's the problem. Even though, even if you had done it as a stream, by the way, those people wouldn't have watched the stream and they still would have held the same opinion. No. But I do agree. There are certain people who are, who are just slightly less crazy who actually might have watched and be like, oh, it's just quite obvious. Like, you might have gotten a little bit of, of clemency, as it were. There were a few things afterwards that came. Well, A, I was talking about it every morning on my stream and I was answering all questions on the stream. Right. So as I'm tweeting, I'm just like, hey, it, people are showing up in my chat. They'd be like, why do you hate women or whatever? The fuck? And then I'm just like, listen, this is this is the point of view, right? So on my stream, I'm able to explain explain the reasoning behind my my messages but this was right in terms of like how i use twitter i screwed up because i shouldn't have done individual tweets i should have done a chain yeah if i ever decide to just you know you know start the morning with napalm again it's going to be a, a, a chain of tweets that are all tied to one another so you can't just like land on it and be like oh this is just an independent thought this is this wholly encapsulates everything he has to say yes like no 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 I need to actually make it so that here's the tweet and then follow the chain down and so that it's all nice and neat and yes. do it that way. Cause I really like what I've ran into, even talking with friends afterwards, where I was like, listen, you know, like, what do you think about this thing? How did I screw up? And they're like, well, I saw that tweet. And I, I mean, I, I thought that was pretty, you know, you, you might have crossed the line. And I'm like, oh, but did you see the other tweets that were explained? They're like, no, no, I, I didn't know. You know, and, and so right there, that's the issue. It's like if they miss the other tweets, then they just see the. Oh, know, by the way, there's another thing or whatever. Right? There is no line. The line is arbitrarily thought up. Oh, after yeah. the fact and then applied so i'll give you an example when people talk like because here's the thing i know exactly what you're referring to somewhere the two ones they always go to is the when are the men only tournaments joke and the joke <laughs> of like pronouns in bio which by the way ryan at rushby media you are a bitch i don't care what's in your bio <laughs> he is, he is don't worry about that. yeah don't, he, don't even worry about what's in your bio 
Yeah, in your case, we're mainly just laughing at you. There's actually people, <laughs> yeah, who, might, no, there's actually people who might put their pronouns in. We might totally respect, probably even use the pronouns. But for you, nothing, you piece of shit. <laughs> okay, once we've got that to the side, here's what I would say, though, right? Because I agree, yeah, obviously those tweets made you look bad, blah, 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 all the rest of it. But that's also where this is just bad faith. Like, the idea that's a line and you've just said some crazy statement. No, no. In the same drama, if people don't know, a professional female player for Dignitas dismissed me and Semler's opinion on the basis we are white, straight yeah, men, yeah. right? If that's not over the line, then what we're <laughs> saying is well behind the fucking line, boys. We're on a fucking love seat having a cocktail, watching her be right at the line, pushing her <laughs> face against it all the time like that. No, no, no. She did the right thing, though, because today how it works is that so long as you say white first, right. you're allowed to okay. say whatever you want right. after that. Okay. And that <laughs> that's totally fine. Okay. So long as you add white whatever da, da, right. da, da, da. it's cool you're good you're not racist or anything you know it's totally fine i just like the way she genuinely did the fucking they're, all, they're also beyond parody she just did the meme of like you're a white male like <laughs> why is that for go to like a fucking abstract discussion about like gender in esports what how do we make them better like you're a white male like, like, I, I'm by the like, way hey, spoiler money. if anyone doesn't know here's another way this show will slightly change which is a lot of people might not know this but Richard has this thing about the way he presented himself publicly, where oh. on the one hand, he will lean into stuff like complaining about haters, but he always has like that moment of lucidity where he sort of realizes like, oh, sorry, a bit bitter now. So he would always, if you remember, be like, he would like jokingly be like, oh, this opening segment is petty grievances. Obviously, that's the end of that segment or whatever. I have to understand fans. I never had a, a, a limit to the petty grievances. Like, I would have had whole episodes that would just keep going. So... Now the fucking now you have to understand the it's back on the menu. It, it can pop off at any point. Absolutely, now. It's, not, it's not a segment. It's yes, uh, exactly. it's part of the show. Exactly, and, uh, and I'm I'm perfectly happy to just shoot the shit and 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 get after it with everybody. Like it doesn't really matter at this point. Want to see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel, then, or you know, be a pleb and don't.